Okay, in this lecture, I want to start talking about metallic crystal structures, and I want to focus on uh, face-centered cubic structures. So uh, let, let's begin by just talking about uh, some features of metallic crystal structures. Um, so there's several features of metallic bonding that, that um, give rise to the structures that we're going to talk about in this class. The first is that uh, all atomic radii are the same, right? So we don't have two materials if we, uh, we have one. You know, we have a um, pure copper, we have pure aluminum, something like that. So in that case, all the atomic radii are the same, uh, and that's just by virtue of there being only one element present. That's going to be in contrast to some of the um, ceramic structures that we'll talk about uh, later on in the class where we're going to have positive and negative ions of different atoms, and uh, the packing uh, will, will be able to be different there. The other feature of metallic bonding, we talked about this already, is that it's not strongly directional. Because the, uh, the, the, the nuclei uh, reside in basically an electron C, their positive charges are, are shielded from each other. So uh, in, in the case of something like a ceramic where you're going to have maybe a positive and a negative uh, attractive and a positive positive repel, in the case of a metal, you have all the nuclei are going to be positive, but they're going to be surrounded by these negatively charged electrons that prevent uh, them from really uh, repelling each other uh, in the sense that you'd expect from ionic bonding. And finally, um, they typically adopt smallest, smaller nearest neighbor distances, which result in um, lower uh, bond energies. Remember, lower is, is a more stable state. Okay, so... The upshot of all of these features is that they typically lead to um, densely packed materials. And I think your your day-to-day -day experience in life bears that out, right? Uh, you think of metals as something dense and heavy. And so you end up with structures uh, that look like this. This happens to be an FCC structure that we're going to talk about uh, later on in this lecture. But but this is an example of, of something that's densely packed. Okay. Before we want to, uh, before we launch into talking about uh, face-centered cubic structure, uh, I want to just ma make some brief comments about how we represent atomic structures. So um, there are two primary ways that we we visualize atoms in a crystal structure. The first way is what's called a hard sphere model, and what we do in a hard sphere model is we assume that the atoms are just defined by some atomic radius. And so I'll give you an example here. The atomic radius for copper is 0.1278 nanometers, okay? So we're going to assume that the that the atom is this, this hard sphere, and they are going to pack tightly together. Um, the left the left hand image here is exactly what I showed you on the previous page. And then if I break down the periodic unit cell and I kind of chop the atoms, it ends up looking something like this, where... Um, you can see how the, these hard spheres are touching each other uh, at all these locations. Okay, so that's the hard sphere model. The second uh, method of representing uh, uh, atom locations in a crystal structure is, what, is with what's called a reduced sphere model. Um, in this case, the atoms are going to be shown smaller than they actually are. So they're going to shrink them down, and that's just so that you can more easily see the structure of the periodic unit cell. So... Here's an example. This is actually showing the same structure as above, but the atoms have been shrunk down uh, so that you can see where they reside on this uh, unit cell. So, for example, in this case, you have you can see you have atoms at the corner. You have an atom centered on each face, right? Well, again, we'll get to this. This being a face-centered cubic structure. Okay. Okay. So I mentioned that their metals are den densely packed. What do we mean by that? And I think the easiest way to start is to think about how we would pack a 2D structure as densely as possible, because 3D is sort of challenging to think about if you haven't done a lot of it. So let's think about how might we pack a 2D structure uh, densely. And of course, if it's going to be dense, we're think, think about ping pong balls. You're going to put ping pong balls in a box. H how might they pack together in, in a single layer? And one option might be this. We, I, this is called square packing. Uh, in, in this case, you have... Uh, atoms all touching the other atoms, but and they're in effectively a square, right? So there's that square is our peri periodic unit cell in this case, and relative to the the atom radius r, that side length of that si uh, periodic unit cell is two times r, right? So if we wanted to ask, well, what's the aerial density? You know, how how, how does the um, how many atoms can we pack in here? 
we would write rho A, which is just telling you it's the aerial density. It's going to be one atom, right? Well, how do I get one atom? Well, if what I look at here is, here's my periodic unit cell, and I see that I've chopped this atom into a fourth, a fourth, a fourth, and a fourth. So I have four one-fourths of an atom, which is a one atom total. And I, of course, can compute the, the area of that square just as uh, the side length squared, so 2r the quantity squared. So I have one atom per 4r squared, or a quarter atom per r squared. That's my aerial density here. Okay? How else could we pack a structure? Well, another way is, is what, what I would refer to as hexagonal packing, um, uh, at least back in my, my composite uh, uh, days, and I, I guess those are still current, but uh, we, we typically uh, use this because this uh, is a is a very efficient uh, method of packing. So we're about to find out how efficient. Okay, so how about a, a periodic cell? Now I understand here we don't just translate, we have to do some flipping, but you can see that this still represents the a fundamental unit within the, the structure. I have, a in this case, I have a sixth of an atom, a sixth of an atom, and a sixth of an atom. I have three of those, so I have a half of an atom inside this triangle. I have a triangle side length of two times r, the radius of the atoms. And so I can compute the aerial density there. So there's my half atom. Uh, I'm just giving you the, the formula for the area of an equilateral triangle, root three over four times uh, the side length uh, squared. So that's two r squared. Uh, gives me one atom divided by two root three times r squared, which gives me 0.2887 atoms per r squared. So you can compare these two. 0.25 and 0.2887 and see that this one is more densely packed than this one. In fact, this uh, hex pack is the, is the most densely packed um, structure that you could have, at least when all the atoms are the same size and are hard spheres, okay? And so as a result, we call that a closed packed uh, plane, okay? So all because they're as closely packed as possible. Okay, so that's 2D. Why did I do all that work when we're really interested in 3D? And the answer is because we could create 3D structures by simply stacking these types of planes, um, maybe shifting the layers as necessary, but to give simple crystalline structures. And so we're going to examine three in this class, uh, the face-centered cubic structure, which is the topic of this lecture. Then in the next, lectures, uh, next lecture, we'll talk about the body-centered cubic structure and the hexagonal closed pack structure, okay? Okay, so now let's spe specialize to the face-centered cubic structure, okay? In the face-centered cubic structure, it's going to arise from stacking those closed-packed planes that we just talked about in a sequence that's A, B, C, A, B, C, A, B, C, and so on and so forth, okay? And what do I mean by A, B, C? So let's think about this. Uh, here's my closed-packed plane, just like you saw before, and we'll call that layer A, Imagine layer B as the same structure, but it's just going to now reside at these locations that are marked by B. And that'll be, let's say, on top of the A plane. And then on top of that B plane is another same exact closed pack layer, but it's shifted so that it lines up in these C locations. Okay, so you can think of C as either on top of B or underneath A. Okay, if you, if you stack up these closed pack planes you end up with the following structure. So here's here's uh, the the green atoms correspond to that A layer. Stacked on top of those are the is the B layer closed packed, and stacked on top of that is a C layer. And and you can see these are at a at, on a cube diagonal. So there's kind of these B atoms go right across this line on the top of the cube. But what that gives you is a structure such that you end up with the following. You have a unit cell that has atoms at the corner of the cube, right? So it's a cubic structure. And atoms are centered. So you can kind of see this atom that has a B label on it. They're centered on the faces of the cube, okay? So we would represent it back to this original. Uh, so you can kind of see the, the cube now slicing the atoms. So there's a face atom. Here's a corner atom. And then here's just another representation. Those layers that we talked about, uh, so one closed packed layer would, would be these three atoms connected to these three atoms connected to these three atoms. So it would form a, like a, a triangle inside that, that uh, unit cell. Okay. I would encourage you, uh, I'm going to post this 
uh, PowerPoint, and, and I, I have some links for you. One it just focuses on the unit cell, and one is an entire lattice. And I'd encourage you to just to click on these, go to, the, go to this website. It lets you pull up um, uh, both a unit cell and a lattice structure and rotate them around. Just kind of get a, get a sense for how the closed pack planes stack up to give you this uh, face-centered cubic structure. Okay, um, I'm going to make the comment that many metals have an FCC structure, and, and th this is not an exhaustive list, but these are some common ones that you're going to encounter. Aluminum, copper, gold, lead, nickel, silver, and platinum all have an FCC structure. Okay, so now, now we've defined this structure, uh, and we're, we've mentioned we're going to talk about other structures. So how do we characterize um, any given structure. So in this case, we're going to interested in how we can characterize the FCC structure and maybe compare it to, let's say, a body-centered cubic or a BCC structure. Uh, one, one characteristic that we talk about with respect to crystal structures is the atomic packing factor. And all that is is the fraction of space occupied by the atoms. So uh, sort of like what we did with the 2D case, we were interested in, in the... Um, how densely they're packed. In this case, we're going to normalize it and say uh, what percentage of the space is occupied by atoms. So it's very simple. It's the volume of the atoms per the unit cell divided by the total volume of the unit cell. It's nothing fancy. So that's one characteristic we want to talk about. The, s the second characteristic we want to talk about is the coordination number. And it, it, that sounds complicated, but all it is is the number of nearest neighbor atoms for each atom. So uh, essentially, at least in the case of FCC, that's how many atoms in that structure are, are if, if I'm an atom in that structure, how many other atoms are, am I touching, okay? Why do we care about that? Because typically, a higher coordination number uh, 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 that's gonna, for a structure is going to have a lower energy state. Now, why is that? Remember that our bond energies begin as negative. So if we have everything at their equilibrium distance that they want to be at, the the um, those energies are negative. So the more bonds we can have, uh, we're going to actually continue to reduce the energy, right? Because it makes it more negative. Okay. Let me give you some examples of how we do this. Let's let's characterize the FCC structure. So the atomic packing factor of FCC. Let me let me just give you some definitions here. Here's that same structure. Um, we're going to call the length of the periodic unit cell, we'll call it A. And since it's cubic, it's A by A by A. And then the atoms have some uh, radius R, right? So the first step in computing the atomic packing factor is figuring out how many atoms we actually have in this unit cell. So I see two types of atoms. One is a face atom, and we talked about that face atom is cut in half. So uh, only half of it resides in the unit cell. The other half resides in the, the neighboring unit cell. So we have face atoms that are contributing one half of an atom to the structure. And we have corner atoms, and those are obviously cut even smaller. Those are cut into eighths. So we can compute the number of atoms in the cell by saying, well, there's six faces in a cube times one half of an atom per face plus eight corners times one eighth of an atom per uh, per corner, actually. Uh, and that's going to give give us... Uh, four atoms. Okay. Okay. So the next step is to develop a relationship between cell lengths and radius. Okay. How are we going to do that? Well, I can recognize this, this triangle here as a 45, 45, 90. I recognize that this length is 2R and I can just use my, my trig relationship and note that this is going to be then 2R times the square root of 2. So that's my relationship. Okay, so now I'm ready to can go ahead and compute my atomic packing factor. And how remember, it's the volume of the atoms. So I have four atoms with the volume. Remember, the volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed um, per atom. Okay, so there's my numerator divided by a cubed, which is just the volume of the whole cell. Okay, I'm going to substitute in my relationship between cell length and the radius. Okay. And so that I'm, I'm going to be able to say a cubed is actually 2r root 2, the quantity cubed. Do some cancellation, uh, just a little uh, algebra. And I end up with the atomic packing factor for FCC is about 0.74. Okay, so that what that means is that, that in an FCC material, 74% of the space is occupied by uh, an atom. Okay? Now let's talk about the coordination number. 
I personally find it uh, easiest to think of the coordination number in terms of closed packed planes that, that stack ABC, ABC. Okay? So I'm going to give you this picture that I'd shown you before. And let's go ahead and just focus on the nearest neighbors of this atom that I'm denoting with a star. Okay? So within this plane A, right? So this is the green atoms. I see six atoms touching the star, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay? So in the closed pack plane that the atom is already in, there's six nearest neighbor atoms. But this this um, atom resides in a stack of these layers, okay? So in the, in the B layer, immediately above the A layer, right, I'm going to have atoms that are sitting at these locations denoted by these blue triangles, and I see that there are three that are going to touch this start atom, okay? And then I'm going to ask the question, what about below the A plane? Well, below the A plane, I have a C plane, right? And so I have atoms at these... Uh, red square locations. There's three of those, right? So that my coordination number is uh, 6 plus 3 plus 3, which is 12 atoms. So the coordination number for an FCC material is 12. Let me give you a note. If an atom is not bonded to 12 atoms in this structure, then that atom is in a higher energy state, right? If I go in and I, let's say, pluck out this atom right here, uh, that that atom, that bond between this atom and that atom, was was reducing, right? It, it's a bonding energy is negative, so so that was giving me an additional um, uh, decrease in my bond energy. And and remember, lower energy equals uh, more stable. Okay, so if I if I don't have that twelve, then if I have less than that, then my atom is going to be in a higher energy state. Why does that matter? Well, think about what a surface is, right? If I have a surface, I'm removing not just this atom, I might just take all of this whole thing and move it away. And so that uh, at the very least, I'm, I'm removing one, I might even be removing two, right? <clears throat> so what that means is that atoms at the surface are actually in a higher energy state. Uh, and in general, materials are going to seek to minimize their surface area uh, because those are high energy areas and they want to minimize their energy. Okay, that's just that's just basic thermodynamics. So that's that's how we think about coordination number and how we would compute it. The final topic I want to cover is density calculations. So we can use the material structure. In this case, we're talking about FCC in conjunction with the atomic weight that we can just look up in a in a um, periodic table, and we can relate it uh, to its density. Okay. So let's write down what density is. Obviously, density is mass per unit volume. That's that's real simple. Uh, in this case, we can write that mass per unit volume as the number of atoms in the unit cell times the atomic weight divided by the volume of the unit cell multiplied by Avogadro's number uh, in the denominator. Okay? So let me give you a really quick example. Aluminum, FCC. Um, it has uh, an atomic weight of 26.98 grams per mole and an atomic radius of 0 0.1431 uh, nanometers. So if I just, um, I, this is simply substituting those numbers into the equation. We already know that for an FCC structure, I have four atoms in the unit cell multiplied by my atomic weight. Okay, what is this quantity here? Remember, two times square root of two times R, that's A, that's the length of the unit cell. And that value cubed is the volume. So this quantity here, cubed, is the volume of the unit cell. And then I have Avogadro's number here. If I do my cancellations with my units, I'm left with uh, a computed theoretical density of 2.7037 grams per cubic centimeter. How does that compare with experiment? If you look it up in a, in a table, you'll see that the experimental value of uh, the density of aluminum is about 2.7 grams per cubic centimeter. So pretty close. Um, so that, that kind of covers uh, how we want to use crystal structures, uh, how we want to characterize crystal structures, and then gives you a flavor um, for what the FCC crystal structure looks like. Okay, and then in future lectures, we'll talk more specifically uh, about other these other two crystal structures, the, the body-centered cubic and the hexagonal closed pack structure.